plays down here in Tennessee. We don't need y'all to talk about us because we're going to talk about ourselves. Football team, all right. Ah, okay, <laughs> all right. So you know, as it goes with sports, Jake. You know, as they say, you win some and you lose some. I mean, that's that's the way it flows. Well, mm-hmm. if you're a Titans fan or you play for the Titans, it's you literally win one, then you lose one, and then you win one, and then you lose one, and then you win one, and then you lose. It's this roller coaster, Jake. I, I do you want off this ride. I mean, good lord, I, we never know what we're getting from this team. Um, Titans, Titans go down uh, in Indianapolis heartbreakingly because we haven't lost there in quite a while, Jake, mm-hmm. uh, by a score of 23 to 16. Welcome in. This is Titans Tube. Justin and Jake here, here to give you our thoughts and recap about what we saw on Sunday. Um, uh, let me. I'll just uh, first of all give really quick points, and I'm just going to throw it right to you. Sounds good. Um, it's frustrating. Uh, first of all, where that f was the run defense? What happened to the run defense? And it wasn't even Jonathan Taylor. Number two, offense cannot finish drives when they get into the red zone, and that was majorly costly, especially a fourth down attempt late in the game with a handoff to Derrick Henry that I was hoping we wouldn't do considering how things were going up until that point in the game. And yet Tim Kelly still gives it to Derrick Henry right into the strength of what the Colts have been doing best. Uh, Thank you so much for that play call, Tim Kelly. So that combined, yeah, like what what happened to the defense, the run defense, terrible. And then, um, yeah, and then Anthony Richardson going down. And dude, I did actually, you know, I texted you, I think, or it might have been somebody else. I did not want to see Gardner Minshew come in because he's got some, like, some of this voodoo magic, I think, over the Titans. Yeah. And he can actually play. I mean, he's he's not your your average slouch backup quarterback. He can, he has proven he can play and come, he can come in and win games for your football team. Anyway, so it's frustrating. I'm, I'm, I'm sad, Jake. I'm sad to lose our first divisional game and no less to Indianapolis, uh, who are now 3-2 and two on the season. Titans dropped to 2-3. and three. Got work to do. But good news considering the trend that the Titans have been on, we will be winning the <laughs> game in London against Baltimore. So that's a little consolation prize. Thank you, Titans, for that. Well, All right, I'm sorry, Jake. Well, what, what do you got for us here? What, what are your takes here on that, this game? Uh, that's A-OK, Justin. Trust me, it was frustrating uh, for me as well yesterday. That was a toughie. That was a toughie to watch, especially in a divisional matchup. That one might sting a little later on down the road. But the silver yeah. lining here, Justin, is the Titans still have five divisional games to play. There's a lot of time to make up lost ground. And does it make the London game next week more meaningful? Yes, it does. You would like to see the Titans be 500 when they get to that bye week. Um, but, Justin, we saw some lapses in run defense. There's no doubt about it. But we saw kind of a hint of that against the Bengals last week. That kind of went unnoticed because the Titans won by 24 points. But Joe Mixon was gashing the Tennessee Titans up the middle, very similar to Zach Moss yesterday for the Indianapolis Colts. Oh, and uh, I don't know if it's for missing Tier Tart in the middle. I feel like he takes up a whole bunch of space, even if he isn't an elite nose tackle by, by any stretch. He just takes up a lot of space and forces you to go somewhere else, either to, you know, Danico Autry or Jeff Simmons on either side. But it just wasn't there yesterday, Justin. But let me say, I am standing up for the Tennessee Titans defense in this oh. game, Justin. I am sticking up for them. You want to know why is because the Colts had the ball inside the 10 yard line twice on Sunday and they came away with three points. It was at the end of the half. And then there was another uh, stop that uh, towards the, I want to say in the third quarter where they had to settle for a field goal. That that's, that's two, you know, goal to go situations for the Annapolis Colts where the Titans defense stood up 
and kept them from putting up touchdowns. And in one case, they stopped them on fourth down right before the half. Okay, Justin, I, I, I kind of teased you before we started filming that I have some stats for you. Yes. Let me take you on a statistical defense of the Titans defense. Okay. 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 Let me take you all the way back to 1993, Justin. That was 30 <laughs> years ago. Uh -huh. All right. 30 years ago, the Titans aren't even in Nashville. There aren't even rumbles of them being in Nashville. They're the Houston Oilers. Uh, why I bring up 1993, Justin, this was the last time that the average points per game in the NFL on a team-by-team -team basis, it was the last time scoring was under 20 points. It was 19 and a half points, roughly, was the average score per game for all 30, or I guess, I don't know, it might have been 30 teams back then. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to take you from that stat to the defense in the last 20, uh, I'm sorry, D in the last 22 games, the defense has held the Titans opponent under 20 points 14 times. 14 times held them under 20, which is below league average, even for 1993 standards. I hope you're wow. kind of following me here. I know I'm I kind so. of here and there. You're just saying for the last 20 games out of the last 24? Out of the last 22 games, oh, the, last the 22. Titans defense has held the opponent to 20 200. points or less. Okay, got it. That's great. Yeah. 14 Especially times, Justin. You want to know how many games the Titans have won? in those 14 games in which they've held the opponent to 20 or less? Uh, they're, half? They're seven and seven. That was a great guess, <laughs> Justin. They're seven and seven in games where they hold the other team to 20 points or less. That is terrible. That yeah. is not going to fly. That's You're not going to win very many ball games when you can't take advantage of holding the other team to 20 points or less. Right. Okay. Let's, let's keep that last 22 games – uh trend here i got this from paul kuharski and this is what started my rabbit hole here justin okay. in the last 22 games the titans have scored 16 or less 16 or less in Jeez. 10 of the last 22 games yeah 10 out of almost almost half of those 20 last 22 games they've scored 16 or less they're 0 and 10 justin you're not going to win any football games Scoring less than 20 points. That my whole statistical journey I just took you on is that for the last 22 games, the Titans offense and model of football is unsustainable. I mean, when the defense shows up, I know they didn't hold Indianapolis to under 20. I get that. But my whole point is you need to score 20 points to win a football game. And the Titans went one and four in the red zone yesterday against the Colts. And they lost. And that's just going to be the matter of fact of how it is because everybody wants to point, wow, our defense was terrible. Christian Fulton was terrible. Yes, this is this can all be true. But the, all the Titans needed to do was score 24 points in that game and they couldn't muster that up. You're going to have to score points to win football games, Justin. I've been saying it till I've been blue in the face ever since the Bengals matchup. That's the 22 games ago, which is, which is the divisional uh -huh. loss against yeah. Cincinnati. Oh. I mean, those those stats, when, when the defense is holding somebody to 20 points or under, you have to win that game. And yeah. it, it's just not showing up. And I don't know if it's time to make the quarterback change. I know this flip-flop of a Titans season has yielded many reactions from us, even just five weeks in. But something has to give, Justin. You can't score 16 points in a game and expect to win – any week, any at all, 0-10 in the last 22 games when the Titans score 16 or less, it's not a mystery why this team is struggling. And and that is yeah. my long-winded statistical number vomit defense of the Titans' defense because it's not their fault, Justin. It's not their fault. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, stat stat of the day with Jake is, is getting good. Man, that's that's some deep, deep digging. You said you got that from PK, though? Uh, Paul, Paul Kukarski Kukarski. tweeted the the in the last 22 games the Titans have scored 16 or less 10 times and they're 0 and 10 yeah. in those games. Okay. Man. And then it got yeah. me thinking to you know you have to score 20 points you have to score 20 points to win a football game and the last time that 20 points won you a football game was 1993 Justin that was 30 years ago so I don't know if the Titans are just stuck in the 30 years ago machine or what but. Man, the defense yeah, is doing their job. The defense is doing their job. 
Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I totally agree with you uh, in that 16 points is clearly backed up by evidence, not enough to win football games. And the offense has got to find a way to be more consistent, put the ball into the end zone. Um, but, man, but the defense, yes, you, you do like to see just like 23 points. That's a manageable amount to overcome. You know, you like that. Uh, but still, the, the defense, like this whole game, they, they just like kind of lacked that. It'll like make, making a play, making a big play. I think we had zero sacks. We had zero turnovers. You know, at the end of the game, we gave the ball back to Indianapolis after that failed fourth down conversion with eight minutes to go. They could not get off the field for that entire rest of the quarter nearly. I think that Indianapolis drove the ball from the five yard line all the way down to well, our, our side of the field. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot to some penalties by Christian Fulton, the much maligned now Christian Fulton, who's not put together a great season in a contract year. This has not, not been a great look for him, but um, um, it, it, was, it was very frustrating to see, you know, it, like Gardner Minshew came in and he, he looked composed and he was picking his spots. He knew exactly where to go with the football. Uh, he was unfazed by any, like we had some good pressure on him on several plays being right in his face, but he was able to flick it away. Uh, he can move, maneuver around in the pocket to, to avoid sacks. And just we could not hit home really with any big plays on defense. And we, when we needed to get the ball back at the end of the game, the, the defense could not get off the field. Uh, so I, I guess that's a little bit of my end of the I get defense. It. it was good, but, you know, like it was – they left something to be desired for sure. And, and, and being able to stop Zach Moss late in the game too where they're just running out the clock was just backbreakingly painful – painful to watch but overall I yes I am with you that th th this team needs this offense to absolutely start picking up their their slack that we are we are too reliant on our defense just to keep make the, those plays keep, yeah yeah I mean it feels like the defense can't has no room for error you know they have yeah. no room for those back back breaking pass interference calls they have no room for you know a 40 50 yard touchdown run in that yeah. in the beginning of the game, it feels like impossible if the tight if the Titans defense makes any minor mistake at all or lets one behind them, it's over. I don't know. Yeah. That's that's where my frustration comes from is that the defense has no room for error. So when they do make an error, oh, it's all the defense's fault now because we expect so much of them. Going back, Justin, the, the defense has held an opponent under 20 points. 14 times in the last 22 games that's damn good this defense is yeah. damn good and then when they let up when they give up 23 points they're suddenly to be crucified and they're the problem with this titans team it doesn't the math is not mathing to me uh <laughs> sorry to yeah. come in and and share that frustration but i just i i get i i'm with you the defense didn't play great and you said it they you know no sacks so there was no big push on the, on the defensive line that we're used to seeing them uh, get pressure on the opposing quarterback week after week. There was none of mm -hmm. that. And and you texted me, you'd almost rather play Anthony Richardson. And you really hate to see that in, in that injury to Anthony Richardson in that game. But I just, you, 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 as Titans fans watching Gardner Minshew with Jacksonville, as soon as he came in with his little rat tail flapping in the wind, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you knew that the Titans might be in trouble, and and you hit the nail on the head. He was composed, and he came right in, didn't show any fear. Man, yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I just don't know what what you do with with this the incredible inconsistency. I mean, last week, dude, was a brilliant masterclass performance of shutting down Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, and that high, you know, well up until yesterday, the. They weren't at the high flying Bengals offense, but they just came out. And I know their opponent was what Arizona. Mm -hmm. And Jamar Chase goes off for 100, what 80 yards, three touchdowns, and they blow them out 34 to whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, and then now we we can't do anything against the Indianapolis or, or Garner Minshew. You know, picks us apart more than Joe Burrow ever did. And mm -hmm. and Zach Moss, you know, really got going and had a much better production. I know she mentioned Joe Mixon had his had his moments and picked his spots a little bit against us in that game last week. But uh, yeah, I think they just, I, we, they kind of played our style of football. The Colts did. They bullied us on both yep. uh, up in the trenches. Uh, mm -hmm. Their, their defense got after us. I don't think our offensive line report, I don't think there were any sacks in the game, but mm -hmm. uh, like, but Tannehill was still under pressure. And mo most importantly, they shut down the run game. 
I mean, I'm looking at the stats now. I'm actually surprised to see Henry got 43 yards. I do not remember seeing him pick up 43 yards throughout that game. It seemed like he was getting he was getting stuffed again and again. The one highlight play coming on the Tajay Spears touchdown run. Um, but we, we could not get the run game going, which is interesting because the pass game, if we want to flip it around to that, like – We've already liked what we saw out of DeAndre Hopkins, but like really, truly now welcome to Tennessee, DeAndre Hopkins. This was peak prime DeAndre Hopkins mm-hmm. performance. It was such a treat to watch him make uh, these catches and these plays for this offense. And the fact that that was literally the only thing we had going, I feel like that should have opened things up a lot more. Um, I mean, yeah, D-Hop went for a buck 40 on eight catches with with just the most beautiful ballerina-like catches on the sideline with the toe taps. That was so exciting to see the Titans receiver make those plays. Um, but, like, lo- looking at the rest of, like, no – oh, Nick Westbrook-Akina, our only other wide receiver to catch a pass. Ooh. One for nine. Like, it, it, we no other receiver could get involved. Didn't really help open up the run game. It was just Tannehill and Hopkins out there playing some backyard ball and making some things happen. I don't even – like, it looked like a, several of those were improvised mm-hmm. and Hopkins was able to extend the play and get open. But uh, that was the only thing, we you know, exciting that we had going. So uh, that's – yeah, DeAndre Hopkins, baby. Let's go. That, that's, Absolutely. That's um, yeah, he's, he's cemented um, himself as not Julio 2.0. So those allegations are now gone. I'm, I'm happy to report. Yes. And yeah, it, that's what the frustration comes from, Justin. It feels like a wasted performance where Tannehill doesn't get sacked and DeAndre Hopkins posts a buck 40. If yeah. you told me that going into the game, I would say, great, the Titans are going to win, right? No, because they couldn't punch the ball in the end zone. I mean, death taxes and Nick Folk is the tagline for this season, Justin. And, and it's and just it's, it makes search. me open my hair. In the long, we have a kicker that hasn't missed a field goal. I don't think he's ever missed a field goal in the history of his career because he hasn't done it in a Titans uniform. So, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, he's the best ever, and and that's such a treat that we got to like. How is this guy just like available to pick? Or we traded him for we a second traded, round yep. pick. Like, I would, yeah, that's so worth it. I, would, I was ready to trade a first round pick for a kicker that wasn't able to <laughs> look this at, at that point. Uh, but, yeah, it's so good to see him come in and just comfortably knock in a 53-yard field goal and then there's two other field goals. He's a, he's a sure thing. And, yeah, and, and DeAndre Hopkins going off in his game. It's like this this should have been, you know, a kind of a no-problem mm-hmm. win. But just the offense, yeah, stalled. The, the stalling of the offense it was in the red zone really, really came back to haunt this team. I mean, I almost forgot. I literally, It literally just popped into my head minutes before we came on. But the the razzle dazzle uh, early in the game with the Derrick Henry like wild kind of play. I forgot. I haven't even watched the highlights. I'm still in pain. But I <laughs> did we fake it to Spears, then pitch it to we, Henry? Yeah, then fake it, pitch to, the to Henry, and like kind of like the sweep out, and then he used the sweep out to throw it. And That's some Kansas I, City Chiefs trickery. It was crap. open. It was it was open. Yes, it was very cute, Justin. It was very very cute. But for uh, a the, running back. I, he had a guy in his face. It was kind of hard, and it was just, you know, just out of I reach. I mean, it was, it was a good ball, but out of reach. And, I mean, I yes, but when your offense is flowing and moving yep. the ball in the way they were, you're going to give a passing attempt to Derrick Henry instead of Ryan Tannehill in that situation. Ah, I don't know, Justin. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we can kind of – go. no, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't want to – Well, I was just going to say, because it felt like what – did not – Tannehill, like, was kind of feeling it. He was on – like, some of those passes to Hopkins were money. They were mm-hmm. right where the ball had to be, away from the defender, where only Hopkins could get it. Uh, I felt like he came ready to play and was composed. I don't – I could be misremembering some maybe head-scratching things from Tannehill, but I thought he came in and played a decent ball game. I know he had a pick at the end of the game, mm-hmm. but in desperation time on fourth down. Um, but I thought he came in and and was, was ready and was – I don't know, yeah. But then we do things like that and take the ball out of his hands, give it to Henry on some trickery – yeah, 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 I don't know. So I don't know, just, I'm just kind of everywhere with this thing because this mm-hmm. this was a winnable game. We just yep. have to execute, you know, whenever we get to the red zone and, and get off the field. I think they were 8 of 13 against our defense on third down. Some of those penalties, but you've like, yeah, you've got to be able to get off the field and give the ball back to your offense. 
Uh, so, yeah, just just he- things here and there. And, I mean, it was a tight game throughout. You know, mm-hmm. the Colts, you know, they, they they played well. They definitely outplayed us. They executed and uh, and dominated in the trenches. And that that's really what it came down to. 100%. 100%, man. And uh, I hate this – this roller coaster of a Titan season because now yeah. it feels like we were, you know, after week one, it was don't panic. And then they beat the chargers and that's all well and good. And then after week three, it was, maybe it's time to panic because they look pretty bad. <laughs> and then disaster. after the Bengals game, it was like, okay, maybe we can turn this around, compete in the AFC South. And now it feels like we're just rudderless. We are, uh, you know, a ship without direction or course. And you look ahead to next season. I know, we shouldn't be, but when the Titans lose in such ugly fashion, it's hard not to go there because, you know, you're looking at a world without Ryan Tannehill. You're looking at possibly a world without Derrick Henry, and you're looking at a world without Christian Fulton as your quarterback one, which for better or for worse at this Probably point. Probably for better. Yeah. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of turnovers. There's some old guys on this team, Justin. What do you do with Kevin Byer? What do you do uh. with, you know, some of these highly paid guys who aren't really – producing up yeah. to like what they're getting paid and it's going to be very very uh it's going to hurt there's going to be some pain in this turnover throughout the next season into 2024 uh but at, at what point let's let's just quick worst case scenario justin at what point do you put in will levis or i know malik willis is technically the number two but i feel like we already know what malik willis is and so at, at what point do you take the keys away from Tannehill and try and jumpstart this offense? Because I saw another tweet talk about some statistics. If you think back to 2019, Marcus Mariota, the Titans start two and four, and they look awful. Mm-hmm. Marcus Mariota had way better statistics than Ryan Tannehill does at, the, at, at this point right now after five games. And Tannehill's not going to make it up in London to to match the Mariota stats when he was benched. So yeah. if if this offense is worse than the first six games of 2019, when you know your your franchise guy, your number two pick overall, Mariota was benched, at what point do you take it out of Tannehill's hands and say we have to try something to jumpstart this offense? I know you're not going to catch lightning in a bottle again and go all the way to the AFC Championship game, but you got to do something. You have yeah. to try something because it's just not working. I don't know. Do you foresee that coming at all? Yeah. Or, and, or what do you think? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's definitely possible. I, the situations are different. It's not – it's kind of comparing, like, little apples to oranges because yeah. Will Levis or Malik Willis are not former starting quarterbacks who started many, many, many games for several years, like Tannehill did in Miami, so he's got that experience. They don't have that NFL experience. Um, but it, it is interesting. I, I'm of the opinion that Brabel, he's not going to bench Tannehill unless in, until the Titans are really kind of looking outside in in the playoff picture and most likely eliminated. That's just my mm-hmm. opinion. I, I could be totally wrong. Uh, but it'll be interesting if the Titans go to London and Tannehill throws up a complete dud and the offense struggles again and Tannehill's throwing three picks. Uh, and the Titans dropped a two and four, and then we're entering the bye week. You might hear some chatter like, is, is it time to make a, a change? Because just like in that 2019 season, the mm-hmm. Titans were two and four, like you mentioned. And so, but I, I just, I don't think it's Tannehill has been the problem in other games like New Orleans. He was not good. Um, I don't even remember the Browns. I think everybody just sucked against yeah. the Browns. <laughs> yeah. um, but I don't think he was that much of a problem in this Indianapolis Colts game here. Um, it's it's just the inconsistency uh, across the board and just the execution from the offensive line to allow things to to happen. And when they give Tannehill time, he can still pick you apart, like we saw with him and DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I just I don't know. Uh, personally, I'm not ready, and it's going to take a lot, and maybe until the season is pretty much done, until we see a Will Levis. I mean, I think we we've got to ride with Tannehill uh, if we want to have any hope, any shot at winning games to get into the playoffs this year. Uh, Cause that's what it's about. It's about winning. It's about mm-hmm. going in and putting your best players in the game to win football games. I, I don't care if you have Super Bowl aspirations or not. I love, love, love the Herm Edwards quote. You play to win the game. The end. I hate the idea of tanking, but 
you know, I, I guess it can work out sometimes. You got freaking either like Pey Peyton Manning and the whatever, both first round or first, number one overall picks that have been great, but it doesn't always happen like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I, I want to see us competing, and I think Ryan Tannehill still gives us the best chance to win. But at the same time, you don't know. Will Levis could just be a, a – uh, uh, just a, a quarterback god waiting in the wings, and we just don't know because we haven't put him on the field yet. Yeah, I highly doubt that. But um, but it, that that's my that's just my two cents. But it, it's gonna get hotter and hotter on the make a change at quarterback seat in that conversation. If Tannehill, like, yeah, he's got very little room to struggle. And mm -hmm. I mean, if if the offensive line is giving him time and the running game is working well, but Tannehill is not delivering and not holding up his end and throwing bad inaccurate passes, turning the ball over. Yeah. You're, yeah. Those conversations are definitely going to get heated. Um, so we'll see. I think it's just a time will tell kind of thing. We'll see what happens against Baltimore. Uh, man, oof, that could, that could be a rough one. I know they just had a bad loss against Pittsburgh. Yeah. Maybe Pittsburgh's defense. I'm terrified to play Pittsburgh. I, I know that they're not expecting <laughs> the season, but we play them in Pittsburgh on prime time. And that defense is going to, be a monstrosity to face for this offense so I, that's way down the line but still mm -hmm. um it's about it's about ravens hate week this week yeah yes it is so. i i agree with you justin i really do i didn't pose that question in the light that i am bench ryan Tannehill right now i don't i i also sure. don't feel that it's yeah. gonna take the titans being maybe two and eight you know or it's it's gonna have to get yeah. ugly before will levis sees a start not due to injury or Malik Willis sees a start not due to injury because yeah. you, you nailed it right on the head. You play to win the game and I don't care what anybody says. Ryan Tannehill gives them the best chance to do that. So I I'm with you, but at this point, man, like why, like there's something, there's a disconnect and it's just not working for this offense. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. I know the quest for 30 points continues and I know even <laughs> Even in that Bengals game where everything worked and everything went great, they only scored 27, Justin. I, I would yeah. know, I, sh I should have done the statistics on how many teams scored over 30 this weekend. And yeah. I did look at, you know, how many teams would have would the Titans beat with 16 points this week? It was like two or three teams the Titans would have beaten in the NFL this week because they, they scored the, the, less than 16. Did the Jets, the Jets with Zach Wilson drop 30 points on the Broncos this week, didn't they? I yes. think they had a defensive touchdown. Yeah, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, um, any just a three on the scoreboard is what I, I want. A three in that first digit column for the Titans. Just come on, come on. I don't and I don't know if it's going to happen across the pond. It would be funny if you know all it took was to go all the way to London to score thirty <laughs> points. But I, who knows? Who knows, man? I, know. Um, I don't know if you want to flip the page and look at that game. I don't know how you feel about Baltimore. I mean, they don't, they talk about a offense who was struggling they only put up 10 points although I was watching that game alongside the Titans it was not Lamar Jackson's fault there were several multiple dropped touchdown passes and I'm talking uh -huh. in the bread basket Lamar couldn't put it there any better you know he, could, he couldn't hand it to him any better and there were so many drops. I want to say Baltimore had seven or eight drops on the day. Really? It was a wolf performance from, from Baltimore's pass catchers. So what is your confidence level? Do you subscribe to the Jekyll and Hyde Titans to where if, you know, the pattern continues, they're going to come out and look pretty good? I hope so. This week I do. This week I, I subscribe to that because that means we will look good and we will <laughs> win the game. But dude, yeah, it's it's not looking good in terms of the trend of the rush defense. Uh, I'm terrified for this rush defense having to go against Lamar Jackson and the gut what Gus Edwards and Justice Hill. I saw I think he's the one guy that scored a touchdown. Yeah, I brought up their page. Yeah, Justin Hill's 14 yard touchdown run there. But they're always gonna have a great rush defense and be a threat with Lamar Jackson with as as elite of an athlete as he is. So it's kind of, kind of, yeah. It, it worries me a bit, at least on that side of the ball. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to expect from our offense. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins could be could be getting open and really help get things going for us. But I mean, we'll see. It com comes down to like, still this O line needs to gel. Like I was excited to get back Skoronsky and uh, we got back Nicholas Petit Ferrer, but he didn't dress. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I thought that would be an improvement, an upgrade, but you really didn't see that take place on the field. 
as opposed to last week where they dominated yeah. uh, Cincinnati. So uh, I'm just, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm in like, we're like, that's what, as is the Titans team. We're, we're in the middle. We're going to win eight or nine games and barely like probably miss out on the playoffs and get a crummy draft pick. But <laughs> like, yeah, I, it's like a coin flip. I mean, Baltimore, I don't know. Baltimore's three and two. I think they're probably better still than that three and two record. The Colts took down Baltimore in Baltimore. And mm-hmm. I don't know. We kind of talked Minshew. about Minshew. Yeah, with Minshew. So, and we talked about how, you know, the Titans were absolutely competing and in, in within this game and the win was was within reach they just couldn't get it done and Baltimore also took a loss in overtime to them so I don't know maybe the Titans and Ravens are kind of kind of playing some mediocre football around the same level right now throwing out some duds but also looking good in other areas but so I don't know it feels like a coin flip and I don't know it feels like we haven't played the Ravens in a while and they've had we had their number for a couple years especially that playoff win. And then they returned the favor and beat the Titans at home in the playoffs. And then I think they got another win against us at some point. I don't know, but I, I'm just saying it's our turn to win in this rivalry. Yes. It's our turn to get a Baltimore Ravens victory under our belt. And so, man, that would, that would restore a lot of good feelings and faith throughout the rest of the season. I mean, you, you've said it for at least two weeks now, if we can get to the bye week at three and three reassess um, and then go from there, you, you would take that with, after what we've seen so far. So I, I, I totally agree. And especially now that we're two and three, we need to go to three and three. Yeah. To, to, in order to keep pace, Justin, I just, yeah, it's going to be all about the Titans keeping pace because I don't know if this team can reel off multiple wins in a row case in point. I mean, the season to this point, you know, like, yeah. I don't know if this team can roll off three or four wins in a row to get back into a division race. So it's going to be all about keeping pace with the Jaguars who are, three and two the Colts who were three and two and got one over on you uh I think the Texans ended up winning did they end up winning that uh, game? Uh, no, no. The Falcons. no coup Falcons. yeah yeah kicked uh, a field goal at the end. Game winning field goal uh yeah. the Texans are two thank and you. three but they are a threatening football team yeah thank you to thank Art, you, Art Smith, Smith and the Falcons um right. I'm with you man I'm middle of the road I mean the Lord knows what to expect from this Titans team especially when you factor in going across the pond <laughs> Uh, the Ravens are there already, and the Titans are leaving on Thursday. I don't know if you believe in the that. jet lag or the, uh, you know, the um, getting used to of it, you know, the time change of it all. So I, the Ravens might have a leg up there, but who's to say, man? And I'm, I'm a little worried about Jeff Simmons' shoulder injury that we saw yesterday. That's the first time we brought it up. Um, he ended yeah. up finishing the game, but, I mean, there there wasn't push before. The injury and there wasn't push after so i i i don't watch i don't crunch game film justin i don't know the extent of this injury um but it's something to think about especially heading into the bye week uh yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be a grind from these titans and we're gonna need a gritty pull it out win in london so for sure remains Classic to be seen man exactly exactly and I, I think the titans are four point dogs uh across the pond so when mike Vrabel's an underdog Pony up, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing us so, a solid. I guess that's where we're at in the Titans football kingdom, Justin. It was a frustrating loss yesterday. There's no there's no doubt about that. Clutching defeat from the jaws of victory, it felt like. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, no, I share the frustration with the defense, even in my vehement or, you know, my, uh, my passionate defense of of the defense I, I i do feel that frustration and and those run holes leaky and i said it i said it as the mm-hmm. clock ticked away yesterday you know it's fun until it happens to you justin because the colts like out titans the titans yesterday yeah. you you, you kind of mentioned it with that eight minute drive right there at the end to just squeeze the life out of the football game convert the titans and... did that last week to the Bengals. yep so you're yep. right yeah being on the other side of that is it's, it's not fun. not not yeah it's not it's not very nice and maybe we should stop <laughs> doing that to other teams justin and we'll be yeah. we'll be more polite and we'll see do unto others as you yeah. would have yeah. to do unto you the, the that's golden the golden rule, rule. yes I love, <laughs> it. love it justin um I don't know if you have anything else to take us to the barn, but uh, two and three, so is life. As as is, yeah, as the way things have been going this year, you win one, you lose one. Man, hopefully that trend will continue next week, and then it'll stop, and then we can start stacking the wins. But I like it. 
Yeah, yeah. Don't get down. Don't get down, Titans fans. You know, it's it's, it's still early in the season. It's a long grind, and um, it's just it's just what we do. It's the, the Titans, you know, just hurting hurting the fans' feelings with their performances. <laughs> it's what you um, asked for. You you'd made this choice to be a Titans fan. So what what'd you expect? Correct, correct. And now we're stuck here. And now we're now we're just no, here. Stuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, no comment, story. subscribe, all of that jazz. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, let us know what the hell you think about this Titan squad. Are we going to go to London and get a dub? Are we going to limp into the bye at two and four? Justin, like you said, long season ahead. Can't hang your head quite yet. Um, you know, the last time, and, and, and I'm not even chalking it up as a loss yet, but the last time the Titans were two and four, they made the AFC championship game. So That's anything's the on the table. I think. Hey, anything's on the table. I love it. All right. Yeah. Peace out, everybody, and we will catch you next week. Thank <laughs> you.